Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And so far in the lectures for guitar amplification and effects, we've been looking at solutions to the one-dimensional wave equation. This is a set of scribblings I scribbled in the previous lecture where we looked at the initial conditions on the position of the string, representing plucking near the middle of the string or plucking near the bridge. And I made a couple of really embarrassing errors that I really need to fix here. So I got the sine and the cosine swapped. That's embarrassing. The other correction I need to make is that down here where we computed the Fourier series coefficients for the triangular initial condition, there's no x here. It would not make any sense for this to be a function of x as it is a function of k. All right, so with that out of the way, what we wanted to do today is to look at the initial conditions on velocity. So the initial conditions on position corresponds to plucking a string. Initial conditions on velocity correspond to striking the string. So let's change this g to a v and remind ourselves what the v means. That's the perpendicular velocity of the string. So let's scoosh this over here a little bit. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to write d dt. And to be really clear about what this means, I should change this to a t. So we're taking the derivative with respect to t and then evaluating it at t equals 0. So that's what we wind up with there. All right. So now the question is, what do I want to do with these? beta k instead of the alpha k. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace g with v, and I'm going to replace the alpha with beta with a little tilde over it. Because as you'll see in a second, this doesn't quite give us beta. It gives us something that's close to beta, though. It will need a little bit of tweaking. All right, so if I take the derivative with respect to t, Basically, the first term will transform from a cosine to a sine, and when I plug t equals 0 into that, it goes away. So I really only have the second term. And so I'll have this sum going from k equals 1 to infinity of sine k pi over l times x. And when I take the derivative, I'll wind up with a beta k and then a k omega naught from the chain rule and taking the derivative of the sine then gives me a cosine, omega naught t. And when I evaluate this at t equals 0, this gives me a 1. So if I were to grab this section here and say that beta k, k omega naught is equal to beta k tilde, well then the rest of this expression here would wind up looking like a Fourier series, and then I could use this Fourier analysis integral in order to find the beta k tilde. And then once I found the beta k tilde, I could say, okay, well, bk is that beta k tilde divided by k omega naught. And that would give me my beta k. So let's do an example. Let's suppose that our initial condition on the velocity is a delta function at a particular position x naught. So this isn't necessarily physically realistic, but it corresponds to taking a tiny but strong hammer and whacking the string with it at the position x naught. So plugging that into the formula up here, we would have beta k tilde is equal to 2 over l, integral from 0 to l, delta x minus x naught, times our sine pi k over lx dx. Now, you should remember from ECE 3084, if you're one of my students at Georgia Tech, that we can make a simplification here with the delta function. The delta function only turns on, so to speak, at x equals x naught. It's zero every place else. So the only x that matters in this expression here is where x is equal to x naught. So in this expression here, I could replace the x with x naught. That turns into a constant that just pulls out in front. And then I would have the integral of a delta function over a range that includes the delta function. 
and that would just give me one. So my beta k is equal to sine pi k over l x naught with a 2 over l in front. And then my actual beta k, well, that's equal to what this is with the sine pi over l k x naught. But it's going to also have this k omega naught sitting in the denominator. And now if I were to go back and write that into our original solution to the 1D wave equation, we have a sum over all of the harmonics. And let's see, my beta k, I've got 2 over l k omega naught. And then I have a sine pi over l k x naught. And then I'll have a sine pi k over l x. So this is from the original expression for the 1D wave equation solution. And this is from my beta k. And then I'll have my term associated with the actual oscillation, which is k omega naught t, where omega naught is the fundamental frequency in radians per second. You would have to divide by 2 pi if you want that in hertz. So notice that I have two different sign structures here in space. One has to do with where we hit the string with the hammer. The other has to do with where we're listening. And this is a general idea. The spatial modes result in a structure where, depending on where you put the pickup, you'll hear different harmonics to varying degrees. And this is very different than something like an acoustic guitar, where you're seated some distance away, and you're mostly actually hearing the vibrations coming out of the sound hole of the guitar. Here, you could actually listen at particular points, and so deciding where to put your pickups is a big part of electric guitar design.